Hello everyone! Here's a brief demonstration on how to mix insulin in one syringe. For this, we will need the following supplies. Here we have a regular acting and an intermediate acting practice insulin vials. A U100 insulin syringe. Here we have a half a mil syringe with a 29 gauge needle and it is half an inch in length. We can also see the expiry date, which is December 31st, 2024. So here we can see that this syringe is a half a mil syringe, which means it measures up to 50 units of insulin. And here we have a one mil syringe that can measure up to 100 units of insulin. So you just need to choose based on the total amount that you will need to administer. We need some alcohol swabs as well as some 2x2 two two gauzes and some gloves. You want to be organized so it may be helpful to have a little tray to put all of your supplies in. Uh, if you are a student being evaluated, you may need to bring a sharps container with you as well as an injection pad. We want to complete the necessary medication checks against the label and the MAR, but that will be demonstrated in greater detail in another video. Here we're reading the medication label. It reads U100 insulin R. We are checking the clarity of the solution. Insulin R should be clear and colorless. And the expiry date is March 2030. Our second vial reads practice humulin N. We can see that it is cloudy, which is normal for this type of insulin. And once again, we're checking the expiry date for this one, it's February 2028. Keep in mind that insulin is good for about 28 days from the time that it was first opened. We want to make sure to roll the vial gently to mix it properly and check that there are no remaining sediments on the bottom of the vial. Try to avoid shaking the vial just because this will form more bubbles in it. Next, we will remove and discard the lid if it is a brand new vial and wipe the top clean with an alcohol swab and then let dry. Then we want to prepare the syringe. Here we're using the low dose insulin syringe, which is the half a milliliter. Make sure the package is intact to ensure its sterility. If your syringe has a safety glide and it gets in the way, you can always twist it to one side so that you can see the meniscus or the lines without it impeding your vision. We want to safely remove the needle cap. You can use two hands or one hand first to loosen it up. Set the cap upside down. I like to pull back on the plunger a couple of times to loosen up the rubber uh, to make it easier to drop the air and the medication. You don't have to do this, but I find it helpful. We're going to withdraw air equivalent to the amount of insulin that is ordered for each of the medication. Let's say we need 15 units of insulin N. We are going to prepare the insulin N vial by injecting 15 units of air into it, taking care that the needle does not touch the solution. Next, we will withdraw air equivalent to the amount needed for insulin R. Let's say that that amount is 10 units. We are going to inject that air into the vial and without removing the needle, invert the vial and withdraw 10 units of insulin. There are multiple ways to withdraw this medication and eliminate the air entering the barrel. Since I'm only withdrawing one medication at the moment and I have not mixed the medications yet, I'm free to push and pull on the plunger with the needle still in the vial. You can also withdraw just a little extra if needed to work out those stubborn bubbles. Again, this is if you still have not mixed your medications yet. Then if you have any excess, you can expel it into the sink. Here, I'm just using a tray for demonstration purposes. We then go back to the insulin and vial. And because we've already prepared it earlier with the air, all we have to do now is withdraw the amount we need, which was 15 units. Once we have the amount we require, we can replace the cap on the needle. This is the only time that we're allowed to recap a needle because the needle is still clean. We never recap a used needle for safety reasons. There are multiple ways to do this, each with its pros and cons, but here are a few examples. 
Now that we're finished drawing up our medication, we can clear up our workstation and gather any other supplies we may need. Once we've identified our patient, we will assess the selected injection site, ensuring that we're following the correct site rotation. We then thoroughly cleanse the site with an alcohol swab. We can clean in an overlapping circular motion starting from the center, or we can use the hashtag technique. Just remember that some facility protocols require that an injection site be cleaned for at least 30 seconds and then allowed to dry thoroughly. Here, we're going to pinch the skin and subcutaneous tissue with our non-dominant hand and inject the needle on a 90 degree angle. You may need to inject at a 45 degree angle if the site does not have sufficient subcutaneous tissue to pinch. Holding the syringe like a pen, we want to inject the needle quickly and firmly in a darting motion and then gently administer the insulin. You can either keep the pinch during administration or let go of the pinch and use the fingers on that non-dominant hand to anchor the syringe in place so it doesn't move around. Withdraw the needle carefully and apply the safety cap if available by using your thumb or the edge of the table or just directly dispose of the needle in the sharps container. Then apply pressure to the injection site. Once you're more experienced, you can apply the pressure while taking care of the used needle but you just have to be very careful. Remember that you may need to apply pressure to the injection site for two to five minutes if your patient is on an anticoagulant medication. And then of course, don't forget to reassess your patient afterwards and document as required. 